Hello, and welcome to soundtuition.com's instrument review of this, a smaller instrument made by Cruiser by Crafter. Sadly, there aren't too many good instrument reviews for student equipment, and that's a real shame because it's students and beginners that really need the most help and the most information so that they can make informed decisions when buying the instrument they're going to take their first steps to learn guitar with. So let's start with the most important question about this instrument. What size is it? And sadly, no one really knows. Is this a half size instrument or a three quarter size instrument? So I'm going to do a full video on this discussing what is called the scale length of a guitar. And that is the distance from here at the nut to here at the bridge, the vibrating string length. That is called the scale length of a guitar. And that affects all the other measurements of an instrument. It affects on an electric guitar where the pickups go. It affects the spacing of the frets here. It affects the overall length of the instrument. Now a full size instrument has been pretty much standardized. And that is to say it is 65 centimeters, 650 millimeters, which is 25 and a half inches or 25.6 inches. The distance from here to here, 650 millimeters. That would be on a full size classical guitar an acoustic guitar made by Taylor, for example, or perhaps a Fender Stratocaster. Now, a smaller scale length, but on an instrument that is still considered full size, for example, a Gibson Les Paul, might be 24 and 3 quarter inches. So the difference between a shorter scale length and a longer scale length on a full size instrument only varies by about an inch, less than 3 centimeters. However, when we come to half size and 3 quarter size instruments, there is no standard size. Now mathematically there should be. If you think about it, a full size instrument with a scale length of 650 millimeters, roughly, has an overall length, roughly, of one meter. So from here to here, on most full size instruments is roughly a meter, give or take a bit. So that means a three quarter size instrument should have an overall length of about 75 centimeters and a scale length if the full size scale length is 650 millimeters, it should have a scale length of 480 millimeters. And this guitar does. This guitar is 75 centimeters from the bottom to the top, and it does have a string length of 480 millimeters. So, therefore, mathematically, this is a three quarter size instrument. However, somewhere along the lines, things have gone wrong throughout history, and what is a really a nine tenths instrument has now been called a three-quarter size. So if you, get an, if you get an instrument and make it nine-tenths of a full-size instrument, that would mean its scale length would be 580 millimeters. So if you have 650 millimeters, full-size scale length, 580 is really nine-tenths of 650, and 480 is three-quarters. However, because we have these three distinct sizes, Somewhere along history, people have started calling the 9 tenths instrument a 3 quarter size instrument, and therefore the 3 quarter size instrument a half size instrument. So when buying a guitar and choosing it and looking on the internet of half size instruments, 3 quarter size instruments, you really need just to know the size of the instrument in centimetres or inches. Knowing it is half size or 3 quarter size depends on what system the company is using to sell their products and to, to advertise their products. Are they talking exactly mathematically three-quarter size, like a scale model? Or are they just saying this is the next one down from the next one down? Are they saying a full size is full size, as we can agree on? The next one down from that is three-quarter size, just because it's smaller. And the next one down from that is a half size, just because it's smaller still. And then a quarter size would be lower than that. So the maths completely goes out the window, and we get into this system where it just means the next size down. So when you're buying an instrument, you really need to check the actual length of the string length and the overall length, whether it is three quarter size or half size. Now, if I was asked, I would like to tell you that I would say that this was a three quarter size instrument because it is, that's correct. And that a larger instrument in between a full size and this was a nine tenths instrument. But sadly, you've got to go with the flow and the majority of people would say it the other way around, that this was a half size instrument. So. This, I think, will, you will find described by most people as a half-size instrument, even though mathematically that's incorrect. So, now we've got that out of the way, um, let's move on to the actual instrument itself. So, Crafter are a Korean company and they make lots of student instruments, and Cruiser is like their uh, cheap brand. 
So this is a cheap brand of a cheap brand of guitar. And this is indeed made in China. Made in China. So this is a very cheap instrument. Brand new, these are about £60, and you can buy them new probably with an amplifier and a case and a lead. And bear that in mind when you're buying this instrument, because it's an electric guitar, you need some extras. You could do with a strap, perhaps. You, you need a guitar lead, you need an amplifier. You can buy a cheap amplifier or a, what's called a headphone amplifier that you plug in, and then you just plug headphones into it so you can hear it just yourself. Great for not annoying the family, um, but not useful for necessarily taking lessons with because the teacher can't hear the student play. Unless you get a headphone splitter, and then that gets a bit complicated. But with an amplifier, a normal practice amp, and a case, you can get these for about £65. Second hand, you can get them for about half that. Uh, and obviously, because it's a small instrument, people grow out of them, and you can come across these on the market quite regularly. The shape of this instrument is a copy of a Fender Stratocaster. That's a famous shape that was invented in roughly the 1950s. And that's a good thing because it looks like a famous guitar on TV. And I think that's really important when encouraging students to learn guitar and get excited and get involved in making music. These are called the horns of a guitar. So it has two horns. That's the main feature of the shape. And that gives you access to these upper frets. This is called a cutaway. However, access to these upper frets isn't really important on this instrument if you're learning because you're never going to really use them, probably. But still, it's nice that it's a shape that can be recognised and seen on TV. I think that's important. It has two pickups. These are called the pickups. This is called the bridge pickup because it is near this thing, the bridge. And this is called the neck pickup because it is near the neck of the guitar. It has a selector switch. And normally on a Fender Stratocaster, you would have a third, a third pickup in the middle on quite a lot of guitars, actually. And this switch would do five positions and select different combinations between those three pickups. However, we have three. Um, we have two pickups, so we have three positions. We have this, selecting the bridge pickup, the sound from the bridge pickup. We have this, which is in the middle, which selects the sound from both pickups. And we have the forward position, which selects the pickup from the neck. So the difference there is that this is going to sound very trebly because the string tension is higher here. And this is going to sound very warm because the string tension is lower, nearer the centre of the string. And you can hear that actually if I just play it acoustically. If I play it here, it's more mellow than if I play it here. Perfect example. So the pickup hears that and that sound comes through your amplifier slightly differently. And in the middle you're going to get something in between. We then have a volume control. That's what it says on the tin. It goes from 0 effectively or 1 to 10. And that just controls the volume of the instrument. We have a tone control, and what that does is it changes the amount of treble or bass you hear from the instrument. So at 10, you're going to get more treble. At 0, you're going to get more bassy sound, a more bass sound. You're going to cut the treble out. Um, so you can select a more bassy sound via the pickup, or a more trebly sound, brighter sound from the pickup. But you can also, each individual pickup, or even both together, you can then control the amount of treble you take away from that sound. And it's just to give you some tonal possibilities, some colour, some variation. We have the output jack, so that is where the guitar lead will go. And just a little tip for you, if you buy one of these guitars, buy what's called an angled guitar lead. So that is to say, on most guitar leads, the jack goes straight. So the, the guitar lead you plug in goes straight and the lead continues. But on an angled jack, it goes like this. So the lead goes this way, but the cable goes, but the bit that goes into the guitar is angled at 90 degrees. What that means is when you plug this in, the cable is going to go flat straight down rather than sticking out and going and having pressure on itself and leaning out. It doesn't make any difference, you can use either. Um, and indeed I'm using a straight jacked cable with this guitar, but an angled jack just makes it a little bit more comfortable and a little bit easier. So just a thought. This is called the bridge, as I've said, and this is called a hardtail bridge because it doesn't move. On a, a normal Fender Stratocaster shape, you quite often have a tremolo arm, or called a whammy bar. And that's a bar that comes out, and as you bend it, you can change the pitch of the strings. If you think like Hank Marvin, if you think of the Shadows, if you think more recently, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, um, they use this to create lots of effects, like gargling effects, or like just a little bit of vibrato. Jimi Hendrix used this a lot. If you check our videos, you'll see him pulling up, a, pulling up the tremolo arm and then moving it to vibrate and change the pitch of the strings. But you can't do that with this because it's a hard tail. That's fine for a beginner, it doesn't matter. We have the nut here. This is the nut on all guitars. We have a truss rod here. So if you can see down the neck here, 
This is called a truss rod. There's a metal bar that runs down the neck of the instrument. And that's really useful because it means you can adjust and set up the guitar better. But as a beginner, you're probably not going to worry too much about that. And if you are, you just need to take it to a professional. We have the tuning pegs, six in a line. They're the same side. That's the same as the design of a Fender Stratocaster. These things are called string trees, and there are two of them. And they are simply just to stop the string from falling off this distance here, from falling off the nut. It's to keep the string in contact with the nut at all times. These aren't great because what it means is there's an extra point of friction. So as you change the tuning, the strings often get stuck here and it really makes the tuning a little bit tricky, which is not a good thing for a beginner. But that's the design of the instrument. So it's not impossible, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. We have two strap buttons here and here, and that's for a strap. For students, for, for children, if you're buying this guitar for a child, a strap can be a really useful thing. You can really encourage them if they've been sat at school all day. Maybe they don't want to sit and play guitar at the end of the day. Maybe they want to walk around a bit and feel a bit free and a bit of exercise. So a strap might be a really useful thing. Try it with your child if you buy this for a child and see how they get on with it. The guitar has a bolt-on neck. So this is neck is one part of wood. The body is another part of wood. And these bolts here, these screws here, go through to connect the neck. This is called a bolt-on neck. Again, the same as a Fender Stratocaster. This really is copying a Fender Stratocaster design. Other kinds of necks you get, you get a glued-on neck, where the neck is glued into the instrument. And you get what's called a through neck, which is where the neck is one piece of wood that runs down all the way here, and then they glue the sides of the body onto it. So it's like one piece of wood down the centre, and then they glue two wings on and cut it. But by the time it's been finished and, and painted and polished, it doesn't look any different. So you wouldn't know, but you wouldn't see these bolts here. That affects the sustain of an instrument, it affects the volume of an instrument, affects the tone of an instrument, but again, for the beginner, it's not important. Hope you enjoy the video of me playing this guitar. You can hear, you can achieve a, quite a good sound with this instrument. The main negatives I would say about this instrument are tuning. It is very hard to keep this guitar in tune. Uh, even for a professional player, so for a beginner and for a student, that might drive you mad. But it's very good for just getting your fingers moving, playing some little tunes, playing some little scales. And also remember, just because this is an electric guitar, doesn't mean you have to learn electric guitar music. You could learn classical music on this instrument anyway. The notes are the same, the frets are the same, there's nothing wrong with that. Last few points, um, for a beginner student, a nylon string guitar has less tension in it and is possibly softer on the fingers. A steel string acoustic guitar, which looks like a classical guitar but has steel strings, um, has a lot more tension but is more used for rock and pop and stuff and acoustic music. Um, this guitar is okay for beginners because the string height, what's called the action, the height of the string to the fretboard is very low. That makes it very easy to play. So this is not a bad choice for a beginner student, for a child or an adult wanting to learn on an inexpensive instrument. That about sums it up. I think I've covered all the points. If you have any questions about this instrument or need any advice or help, please check out our website, soundtuition.com, and, and drop me an email. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, and uh, like and subscribe. Just one final thought, and this is probably the most important for a review. Would I actually buy this? Who would I recommend purchases this instrument? Would I recommend it to a friend? Would I recommend it to a student? I actually did buy this instrument for myself and to sell to students. So I'm having a lot of fun with it uh, myself, just to be playing with it and, and doing a bit of practice with it and seeing what sounds I can get out of it. There is something quite fun about playing a half size instrument for a change. I think if you travel around a lot, this is a very, very good instrument. Uh, if you're going on trains, it's easier to carry around with you. It fits in a smaller case. If you're going on planes, this probably would fit in an overhead locker, and you probably you might be allowed with this on a plane. Do not quote me about that. You'd need to check with an airline. But you're definitely going to get through security and, and get onto a plane and, and be able to take this on holiday with you to practice far easier than you would a full-size instrument. I think if you're buying this for a child, you have to think about the size of your child. You have to think about does the shape inspire them and interest them if they really like the shape and this color does that make them practice more that's a very important thing you have to think about the weight of the instrument this is a solid bodied electric guitar so this is a solid piece of wood it does have a fair bit of weight to it and it is a lot heavier than say a classical guitar so you need to think would a half size classical guitar be a better investment in terms of the weight of it and size of it for your child that's something that you need to consider i think it is the strings are easy enough push down into the frets. I don't think there's any 
problem there for most students, uh, adults or children. If you're looking for an inexpensive instrument, I think that's a very reasonable, this is a very reasonable purchase, but remember you might need a case for it, you definitely need a guitar lead for it and a small amplifier, remember that when you're buying it. In terms of styles of music you can play on it, I personally as a teacher I believe you can play any style of music on any instrument, but there are obviously some things you can't do on a classical guitar that you can do on an electric guitar and vice versa. So you have to think a little bit maybe about the style of music the student primarily wants to learn. Um, and, and I think for me, personally, um, I wouldn't use this live. I think the tuning is far too difficult on it. It doesn't stay in tune very well and that could be something that puts off a beginner. So that's definitely something you need to think about. Hope that's useful for you. I hope it's been very informative. Like and subscribe and have a lovely, lovely day.